Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Log Rotate and Buster and something that actually caught me a bit off guard when it comes to scheduling tasks in Buster. So we are going to hit a lot of different things but it's mainly around how you can rotate your logs in a Linux environment. And Log Rotate is a program that will take a bunch of different log files and then create new copies of these log files and then clean up the old one. So if you think of it as a running log, you can, for instance, have a log file that gets a huge because it's so much logged into it. And then you might want to split it up and separate it into for instance, days. So you say, I want to keep logs for 30 days and I want those to be packed so they don't take up much disk space. And then I want to uh, iterate over that in order to have them both separated in multiple logs and also cleaning up. So after 30 days, you, you throw away the, the oldest log because it will not be any interest anymore. And in some cases you need to do this because of GDPR in, uh, reasons, for instance. So yeah, in our case, we didn't, we can't really keep information about people's IP more than 30 days. So we need to remove those logs. So that's one reason why you need to have log rotate. So let's jump over here to see uh, this machine. I've created a Buster machine. And this is completely from scratch, a server ma machine in Buster. Haven't installed anything extra to it. It's just a clean install. So if we look here into the Etsy uh, directory, here we have all the log files and we have also log files for log rotate. So if we go into log rotate here and then edit the R sys log. So this is for the system log files that we need to rotate. And here we can see that we have a rotate that we keep seven instances of this log. And in this case, we are talking about the syslog and it should be rotated daily. And if the file is missing, that is okay. Then just create it. And uh, we don't rotate if the file is empty. So if we haven't logged anything, we will not rotate it. And we can uh, have a delayed compression. This means that the first rotation that we do, so we take one log file and rotate it to another file, that will not be compressed. So you will have two days of uh, uncompressed data. And then you say, I want to compress the rest of them uh, into uh, zipped archives or gzipped archives. And then after you have rotated, I want you to run this specific script. And here you can put in a lot of different things that you want to run. For instance, you might want a service to restart or something like that. Uh, if we go further down here, we also have the same for these files here, but those are rotated four times and it's done weekly. You can also add limits like I want you to rotate this file it, if it exceeds 10 megabytes or something like that. So you can have a lot of different things that you configure here in order to get log rotate to uh, rotate your logs. And if we go into the uh, var log directory, we can see this in action. We see here that we have a kernel log for instance, and we have one uh, file that it has rotated to. And because it's empty, it will not rotate it again. Uh, on the other hand, we have the syslog down here. We see that it has rotated four times and it has those uh, compressed logs here. So this is how the log rotate works. It's not that complicated. There is a lot of different things that you can configure in log rotate if you like, but the simple config is not that hard. And in our case, we had a system service that needed to be restarted after the log was rotated. And that system service worked as hard as it could during the midnight. So in the midnight, we had a lot of different uh, calls to this service. The service was working really hard in order to prepare for the next day. So having something rotating between 10 o'clock in the evening and six o'clock in the morning was a really bad idea. 
and how you usually have uh, this run in a system of uh, Linux, you have something called a cron tab or a cron job. So if we go into the uh, uh, configuration again here, we have the cron, um, cron uh, daily for instance, and here we can see that we have log rotate as one of the scripts in the log rotate in the cron daily. And if we look at this log rotate script, it says that it should look if uh, there is a system D running, and then it should uh, look at this is not running at the moment, that we don't have the uh, log rotate running at the moment, and then it should do the log rotate. So this is a pretty simple script, and it does the log rotate for you. In our case, because this is run daily, and we didn't have any we didn't really have a good handle on when it's running. We disabled the script, removed it, and then we created our own script and said that that script should run eight o'clock in the morning. So we got out of this window when things should run. But what was happening was the logs was rotated and the service was restarted in the middle of the night anyway. And this was a little bit disheartening. It was very strange and we, we really didn't get why this log rotate was running in the middle of the night when we had told it to run in the morning. And if, for me, it got to a point where I did a lot of Google searching in order to find the solution to this. Um, because on this system, we didn't have this file that you see before you at the moment which has the answer to the question, which is not obvious if you don't have this file. So I had to search a lot during the, on the internet and finally I found the solution here. Skip in favor of system D timer. So in Buster, the new version, you now have a system D timer that handles these things for you. So if we go out again here and then run system uh, control, list timers uh, it will tell you that there is a bunch of timers here I see if we can see them on all on screen and you see that they are running um, in the middle of the night and they are running the log rotate timer and the this concept is a little bit better because it will actually find a place where it's more opportune to run the timer so for instance, we can have something that is configured to run in the middle of the night, but you can skip it up to 12 hours before you actually run it. So it's a little bit dependent on how hard the system is working, but in our case it was doing the log rotate in the middle of the night and shutting down our service. Even if it was a minute later, it didn't really matter because it was during the peak hour of our system. So it didn't really work for us. So this is the timer uh, thing that I found out, found, found was in the system now, and I didn't know about it. It was, I thought it was the cron that handled it, but it was the timers. So let's look into the directory lib. Uh, so the library system, D system, and here we have a lot of different configuration files for these timer services. So if we look at the, for instance, log rotate, there is two files, one service file, and it tells you what the log rotate should do, what should be run, uh, how shall, should the scheduling be done, it should be done with nice, so it doesn't really hurt the system, it should do a best effort, and so on. So it, that's the performance thing about this and also how uh, ha to handle temp and so on. So it's a, a really good configuration file to get this um, rotation running. And then we have the timer file here where it tells you when it should be running. On this case, we had on a calendar daily, but you could have up to a gap of 12 hours before you're actually running it because the system might be doing a lot of stuff. And in this case here, I went in and said, I don't want this to be calendar daily. I did said calendar dar uh, equals to, and then you had star dash star dash star. So run it 
any time. And then you can actually type this specific time. So I typed, uh, let's see here, uh, uh, 08, 0, 0, 0, 0. And that string will give you the option to run this every time, every day, eight o'clock in the morning. And when we have edited this file, we need to reload the timers. And in order to do that, we first off need to do a system and uh, control reload um, or daemon reload. So that's the first thing we need to do. And we do that with sudo. And then we need to do a uh, uh, restart or reload of our log rotate timer. So now when we've done that, if we do a system CTRL list timers, we can now see that this timer is scheduled uh, for the log rotate at eight o'clock uh, tomorrow. So it was run uh, last at 12 o'clock, but now it should run at eight o'clock. That's the scheduled time. So we have 19 hours left until it will be run again. So that was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, Leave them down in the comment section down below. Did you know that there were timers in the new Debian system? Leave a comment about that as well. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.